After reading The Rise of Skywalker's novel, I wanted to quickly cover five things that I wish were in the film in some capacity. And these five things, at least from the way I am looking at this movie, would help flesh out some vital information that I think needed screen time in order to help the internal logic of the story itself. Disclaimer, this isn't a video about hating the movie. I like Tross. It's an okay movie. And it grew on me with each subsequent viewing. Tross, just like Rogue One, works much better on paper for me. So with that out of the way, let us begin. Number 5. Huck saying this about Kylo Ren in the beginning of the film on Mustafar. He's gone mad. Flames of the rebellion burn across the galaxy, and Ren chases a ghost. Imagine this edit. We tilt down to see Mustafar, but rather than just see Kylo Ren, it's an establishing shot of Hux staring off at a battle just off frame, and we hear the muffled sound design of the war. Hux spits out this line about Kylo having gone mad, and this is followed up by then Pride revealing that he's also there alongside Hux, and he's gazing on at the battle, saying, he's almost beautiful to watch as if Hux is nothing. And then boom, then we cut right to Kylo Ren in the heat of battle. The inclusion of that one line, along with Pride's response and then cutting to the reveal of the feral Kylo Ren decimating the Vader loyalists, would have been a much better sequence of events to kick off the story. Plus, we get some hints at the First Order's doubt regarding Palpatine's broadcast, while also confirming right away that after The Last Jedi, the Rebellion is still quite operational. In Rebellion, I mean Resistance, Rebellion. I think at this point is interchangeable. Number four, the Eye of Webbish Bog. This is the third or fourth time on this channel that I've talked about this character. This creature's conversation is integral to Kylo Ren's path in the film. Without it, I think the journey to Exegol as well as the return of Ben Solo loses a bit of gravitas because of the nice setup that's placed in this interaction. The Eye of Webbish Bog tells Kylo that if he continues down his path, he will encounter his true self. If you have kept up with the rise of Kylo Ren, that sentiment is something with profound implications regarding Ben Solo. But for the film's purposes, it would have gone a long way with foreshadowing Kylo's true self as Ben Solo all along. And their exchange about the Wayfinder also adds more mystery to the ghost that Hux believes Kylo is chasing. After he's granted his grandfather's Wayfinder, Bog explains to Kylo that this device will guide him to the unknown regions, to him. And now this is giving us an opposing view to what Hux just mentioned earlier. Maybe Palpatine really is out out there, and it allows the audience to wrestle with that question at least for a little bit. Plus, the entire set design and the creature design is just way too good to have not kept in the film. Number 3. Leia hearing Luke's voice telling her that it's time throughout the entire film. Now, before I go further, I do want to say that I fully comprehend that it was not feasible to film all of these scenes because of the unfortunate death of Carrie Fisher. And I think the fact that we got Leia in The Rise of Skywalker at all is a miracle. This movie did its best with the assets it had, and while some of it can feel like a little bit like a video game, I find the majority of Leia's scenes to be pretty much jaw-dropping, knowing how much passion went into making sure Leia had a role to play in the final film. So with that said, the reason I like this very tiny aspect of the book is because it feels so Star Wars-y and like an homage to Obi-Wan telling Luke to let go before delivering the final shot to the Death Star. I would have loved to hear Jedi Master Luke's gentle voice from the beyond talking to his sister, letting her know that it's almost time to join him. And it also lets us know that Luke's prepared her for this transition, foreshadowing her final appearance as a Force ghost, while also reinforcing that there's nothing really to be sad about. It's only natural that this would happen. After all, there is no death, there is only the Force. Number two. Palpatine's full discussion with Kylo Ren on Exegol, and primarily two things from that discussion. I thought hearing Palpatine talk about the Galactic Rebellion was really important. It gives a tiny bit more depth and reason to his existence at all in the sequels. Revenge of the Palpatine. And the other item here is what he says to Kylo Ren regarding his future. Kylo will die if he doesn't turn Rey to the dark side, and that the First Order will fall alongside with him. And Palpatine tells Kylo that he sensed as much already. Rey is Kylo's biggest failure. This makes Kylo's journey through the film much more interesting had it been in screen. His motivation beyond wanting to rule the galaxy is also fueled by a primal one, the desire to live. But in the end, Kylo Ren returns to the light and chooses to go to Rey on Exegol, basically knowing that, well, f*** it, I'm definitely going to die now, so I might as well become a legend before that happens. <clears throat>
It even makes his line about knowing what he has to do, but he doesn't know if he has the strength to do it, take on a lot more meaning than just what's obviously in front of our eyes. For me, it helps make Ben's passing into the Force and his final act of saving Rey take on more significance beyond the obvious. Maybe had we heard this from the beginning of the film, about Kylo's destiny and all of it regarding his death, seeing him move through, accepting what he needs to do to bring Rey back would hit even stronger. Number 1. The Interrogation of Chewie at the Hands of Kylo Ren This story beat exists in concept art, and I have a gut feeling that this was a sequence lifted out of the film because it may have been too intense for some younger viewers. Then again, maybe that never happened. But I do think it would make sense as to why Kylo Ren has Chewie's belongings in his chambers in the film. So initially, Kylo is confrontational with Chewie after they capture him, reminding him that he didn't forget about being blasted by his bowcaster. He throws down his helmet and his saber, and he unshackles Chewbacca, basically screaming at him to do something, to fight him. But Chewie won't do anything. He knows that Kylo has power in the Force, and that he doesn't. And what happens next is definitely sad, but with that said, in my opinion, it should have definitely been in the film. Just like he did with Rey, Kylo interrogates Chewie searching his mind. However, rather than finding feelings of hatred towards him, he finds that Chewie feels loss and love for Ben Solo. A lot of Chewie's happiest memories with the Solo family flash before Kylo's eyes, and he sees moments that he and Chewie shared specifically. I think watching this all unfold with the visions going before Kylo Ren's eyes would have had everybody in the theater in tears. And ultimately, Chewie never lost hope that Ben could become better, that he could come back. And Kylo senses this, and the entire interaction dramatically affects his state for a while. I think giving a moment to Chewie that plays a big part in the eventual return of Ben Solo would have been amazing. It plays out really well in the book, and I would have loved to see this in the movie. So those are my five things from the novel that I wish would have been incorporated into the final film for The Rise of Skywalker. I believe at best it would have made for a more fluid experience of the story while also providing one big thing The Rise of Skywalker lacks context. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have read the novel and you had other scenes that you wished were in the film, post them down below. I'd love to see it. May the force be with you. Adat is signing off.